Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 23rd of October and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles based on to around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 for November at the end of the video and I shall get something back for you in a moment just to say that first video we say was our 6am UK weather forecast and we've also uh, released Jamie Friday as well. Please check out today's two videos so far please like share subscribe on those videos and content and thank you so much everybody for uh, doing that for gabs or weather beats right we're going to start off in the tropical atlantic as usual so we've got tropical storm sean still going on here but he's back to tropical storm which was tropical depression yesterday it wasn't predicted to become a tropical storm um but has powered up back back up to tropical storm status giving maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour with a minimum set pressure of 1004 millibars clicking on sean we can see this tropical storm will continue into the weekend and then later in the weekend to the beginning of next week goes post tropical becomes a post tropical depression then we've also got a yellow x which is disturbance one only 10 percent chance of cyclone formation with that in the next two days but a 70 percent chance potentially in the next seven days so that could well be our next named tropical storm and or hurricane and uh, obviously we'll keep you updated about that as we go uh, into the weekend and next week as well uh, right setting the temperature is the beginning it's ticked down so we're now sitting at 15.1 which is 4.5 degrees above the 6199 average but visuals yesterday to the 12th of the uh, October. That will probably tick up again tomorrow. It's very warm out there this afternoon, but it's a one day only offer and we're in a warm sector right now as the low pressure pushes through later on in the afternoon into the evening. Cooler, colder air will start to come in from the northwest so over the weekend and into the early part of next week. Things will be cooling down uh, and the ECT will then the drop of CT will uh, start gathering pace. But uh, we've got a day off from that today. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at London today, the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for London, showing off above average at the low. But the upper air temperatures will be going cooler to colder over the weekend to the beginning of next week. And then the upper air temperatures will start to lift up um, through the course of next week before hovering quite close to average. So we've got warmer ensemble members up here, we've got cooler colder ensemble members down here so a lot of scatter then as we go from the third week to the final week uh, of october but no sign really of a return to the warmth that we've had through the course of this autumn the white line which is the ensemble being it's actually a little bit underneath the red line actually a little bit below average so looking relatively cool i think as we go through the final uh week to 10 days of october precipitation wise so uh lots of wet weather clearing it out to the way uh, today then we're going to be going drier over the next few days before we pick the precipitation back up again through uh next week so possibly turning wetter again later next week and those unsettled conditions then lasting to the final week of october potentially Temperature anomalies on the 13th, 21st of October are going to be below average in many areas, but it's a little bit above average down in the south. And precipitation anomalies on the 13th, 21st of October dry than average in the northern half of the country and uh, a little bit wetter than average for England and Wales. The latest wind flow map from Earth, no school dot net show there's an active weather front through here ahead of that. It's warm with winds coming in from the southwest behind it, though, turning cooler or colder with winds going into more of a northwesterly direction as that low pressure pushes through um we're going to find most cooler to colder northwesterly northerly winds descending down across the western side of europe then right let's start going through chart data this is how the latest uk met euro run is looking for midnight on monday high pressure oak top of the country can be quite a cold ridge will bring a lot of dry weather but also some pretty cold nights with it uh into tuesday wednesday a high pressure dominating weather lots of dry weather but pretty cold as well and then into the second half of next week the high pressure begin to retreat away to the northeast low pressure down toward the bay of biscay winds coming up from a southerly southeast direction that brings warmer air up from the southeast but the low pressure around biscay will start to uh, push wetter weather in from the uh southwest into uh, southern and western parts of the country 
I can't again show my high pressure dominating weather on Monday, bringing lots of dry weather with that high pressure remains in control through to the middle of uh, next week. Then start to shift towards Scandinavia. We bring the wind in for a southerly to a southeasterly direction into the second half of uh, next week with low pressure to our southwest, high pressure over Scandinavia. Winds coming in from the southeast. So Technically, that's bringing warm air, uh, warmer up air temperatures in with both southeast winds. Down the surface, it might not necessarily feel all that warm, to be honest. And by the end of the ICON run, gets us to be day on Friday next week. High pressure is aligning over Scandinavia uh, such, but we actually start bringing in a genuine easterly wind then. So it's starting to look colder as those winds turn into uh, the east, potentially by the, uh, by the following weekend. Uh, which will be the 21st of the 22nd of October. The GFS Midnight Run, again, that area of high pressure dominating the weather on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all seeing that high pressure in control. Winds gradually shifting into a southeasterly direction, so starting to turn a little bit milder. Remember, low pressure coming up from the southwest brings some outbreaks of rain with it. Through to the end of next week, low pressures to the south, high pressures over Scandinavia. Winds coming in from an east or southeast direction, so wet to the south and west, drier further northeast. Winds from a southeasterly point um, should lift the temperature up to some degree, but might feel a bit cold and dank, I think, with those southeasty winds. And then beyond that, we take the low pressure wave to the east, we start to bring in some cooler air from uh, the northwest before high pressure re establishes over the country as we come into the closing days of uh, October. And then low pressure back in again. So a real seesaw there in the last week of October between uh, low pressure and high pressure between drier and wetter condition for GFS 6Z. Once more, with that area of high pressure in control through Monday to Tuesday. Wednesday, the high pressure retreats away to the north. Things low pressure starts coming up from the southwest. So turning wetter in the south and west, but with those southeasterly winds, um, you know, probably bring some milder air in as well. Uh, towards day 10, high pressure tried to take over across Scandinavia, but never quite doing so. So this potentially is quite a wet pattern for the south with the low pressure centred to the south. Um, high pressure to our uh, sort of northeast uh, keeps the wind in from that southeasterly direction up towards day 10. Beyond day 10, a deepening area of low pressure around Biscay threatening more rain on the south, um, or to the south, and uh, northern regions dominated by high pressure. We end up under uh, some sort of sh uh, flabby ridge there. Potentially, we see quite a wet pattern down across southern parts of the country. It's not a particularly wet pattern, though, further north and northeast. If you're enjoying the video, please give you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Web. We thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. We've passed 17,000 subscribers. We're going to have a little bit of a celebration on Sunday's live stream. And uh, then after that, we are going to be uh, on the grind to 18K, I think. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, right, GM again with your high pressure in control of weather on Monday, bringing a lot of dry uh, weather with it. That's a chilly ridge boat. High pressure moves up towards Scandinavia through the middle to the second half of next week. A proper Scandinavian high takes over then as we move into the weekend, 22nd, uh, 21st, 22nd of October. Easterly winds and uh, that's been chilly, quite cold air in from the east. There could be some um, rain uh, for southern and east parts. It's actually cold rain with both east and north easterly winds. Now, a big out of all model output, but GEM is probably the best with that easterly, other than Icon, which does look pretty decent for a proper easterly by uh, by um, the weekend of 21st, 22nd of October. And then the ECM uh, rounds all off, again, under high pressure on Monday, bringing it a lot dry, uh, but quite chilly weather with it. Early part of next week, high pressure begins to move more towards the north of the north. Things we pull the wind in from more of a southeasterly direction into the middle to second half of next week. High pressure of Scandinavia, low pressure down towards Biscay, southerly, southeasterly wind. They could have uh, children, they could bring a lot of dank, uh, damp, cloudy weather with those uh, southeasterly winds. Eventually, though, uh, we find that uh, the low pressure to the southwest starts to threaten wet weather into southern southwestern parts of the country. We've just never quite set up that Scandinavian high to an alignment that brings in a genuine uh, easterly wind. So it's more like of a southeasterly type damp, dank uh, wind that we've got going on. 
uh, with that rather than a genuine easterling. This was precipitation forecast based on the East Chevron from Spectro.com. More rain coming southwards and eastwards through the course of uh, this afternoon. And once that gets out of the way, then we open the door to those cooler, colder, northwesterly winds, wintry showers into the northern half of the country as well. Beyond that, a lot of uh, dry weather over the weekend and into uh, uh, the early part of next week before wet weather starts coming up from the southwest later next week, from the middle part of the week. So it turned wet for Ireland, England, and Wales, but Scotland is in a drier scenario. And then further showery bursts, really, as we head on towards um, day 10. Now, you'll notice that um, we start bringing showers in from the east here on those southeasterly winds around the 22nd, 23rd of October. You will notice some green splodges in there. So despite the wind being southeast, it certainly isn't overly warm with that southeasterly wind. And, um, you know, over Pennine, Scottish Mountains, just possession of a few um, snow flurries. Won't be anything significant, but I reckon it'll be it'll be a cold, damp sort of uh, southeast. You what you have there, you know, uh, a very dank, damp, cold, cold, raw type um, scenario. Uh, this is uh, these are the on the table in the ECM Ensemble today for day 10. Okay, it's 23rd of October. 17 members of the ECM Ensembles with a proper Scandinavian high to our north east, low pressure to our south, and winds coming in from an easterly direction. So uh, that's a genuine sort of uh, Scandi that we've got uh, going on with that. We've got 14, again, with low pressure, more centred over the top of the country, but high pressure is further away to the north and north east. That brings a lot of wet weather up from the south into the west side of Europe. Got 12 with high pressure between Iceland and Norway, low pressure to the south winds coming in from an east to a north east direction. So, wettest in the south, dry still, the north, quite chilly. And then we've got 80 cream of control of the operation run again. High pressure to the north, low pressure to the south winds coming in from an easterly uh, direction with that once again. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets 28th of October, 16 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure blocking to the north, low pressure to the south, southwest. That brings the wettest weather into the south, dries up in the north. 13, again, high pressure towards Scandinavia, low pressure over France, winds coming in from the east, wettest weather with that is in the south. Um, winds are from the east, they won't be especially cold, but certainly damp, sort of chilly, dank feel. Eight with low pressure over top of the country. That uh, bring very unsettled weather. Six with a ridge from the southwest to the northeast. Mostly dry with that, but winds coming in from an east or northeasterly uh, direction. So uh, dry but cool there. Five with high pressure just to our northwest. Mostly dry um, and could be uh, a little bit on the chilly side with winds in from the northeast. And then three milder with low pressure, uh, high pressure over France, low pressure towards Iceland and Greenland. And that's returning us back to an Atlantic west-southwesterly flow. That's the mildest option. Uh, that's like reverting back to a west-southwesterly. Most of the options both seem to involve high pressure either over or to the north of the country. And so consequently uh, would be quite chilly, I think. CFSB2 finally, these, uh, this is the 700 mm bar high dominant for uh, November. These update daily, uh, remember. We start looking today. So, a uh, high pressure above average height centered over uh, to the east, northeast of the country. Quite a block sort of November then. Winds in from an easterly direction. So, uh, the temperature anomaly is no better than average. Uh, really, it actually looks quite cold over on the eastern, southeastern side of Europe. And uh, precipitation wise, uh, drier than average through uh, the UK, Ireland, and into uh, some northern parts of Europe as well. So a dry but potentially rather cold November coming up there, if that is right. Um, you know, very significantly different to what we've had previous autumn so far. But we shall see. It's all speculation. So um, let's wait and see. Right, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, subscribe. Please show show by doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Worthy. We thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that for us. I'll just tell you what's coming up tomorrow. We're going to have a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. There'll be the EC42 there, the weekend forecast, and the 10 to 14 
there as well. Four videos, lots of content to come tomorrow. So please check, keep checking back the channel for more on Sunday by the way. 6 a.m. forecast, but next winter update, seventh winter update on that one. And also uh, we'll be live at uh, 6 p.m. on Sunday, live streaming our 10 to 14 day uh, discussing um, last week's sixth winter update and this week's seventh winter update. So it'll be an epic, epic live stream. Um, and uh, and we'll show you some long range on that as well. So lots to look forward to over the weekend. Keep checking back to the channel. Hold on. <coughs> <coughs> so sorry, buddy. Almost got through the video without a cough. But as you hear, I am sounding a lot better now. Um, so, uh, yeah, keep checking back to the channel for more. Uh, and for this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.